Kurnia. Due to development managers, my job at St Johnson, uh, at the moment at the time, we're looking after four teams. We've got a 13, which is a new team, 14s, 15s and 16 stroke 17s. Uh, I see my job as bringing the players through to the edge of being full time. And then when they come there, myself, Alec, the manager, assistant manager, will make their mind up for they come in full time. And then once they do come in full time, that's them left me, uh, the rest up to them. As I say, being here for the 20 odd years, you know, obviously you do have a big bond with the club. Seen a lot of changes, and I say the changes have been for the good. The old Newton Park, and then coming up here, and you always be very professional, whatever you do. We tell the kids that. It doesn't matter if you're a Celtic supporter or a, a New Coast supporter or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you always say, make sure you do your best for who's employing you and be professional with everything you do. Just showing you over the, the office, obviously. Spend a lot of time here, I've got my own toaster, microwave, fridge, which is all full of Coca-Cola as you can see. Uh, job's quite time consuming so I keep the pictures of the grandkids so I remember what they look like. Also the board, this is all the kids' jobs that they do, you know, before training. Like so they've got Craig Reed and Carl McConnell, they've got to get the gaffer and the staff's tea, put on Sky, make up juice for the, the first team players. Then again, we went to the tactics board, which will will work with the coaches, uh, explaining what we're doing or what we want to try to do. With the younger kids, we try to change the system, so they're used to playing four three three, four four two, three at the back. We try to, you know, educate them that way. See part of their education. The joy most of the job is seeing kids progress. Uh, you know, like we Muna going into the first team, uh, Reynolds when he was here in the first team, Stevie May, we had Stevie May since I think it was eleven year old seen him develop and hopefully develops to a first team players. Also some of the kids that have come through, the Caddises that have been here since they were 14 year old, going on and playing the Scotland squads. That, that, that gives you a big boost and you know makes you feel good about yourself at times. Uh, the kit job involves ordering all the kit for the start of the season, making sure it's all numbered properly, named properly. I bring my granddaughter in to help me doing that. She loves doing that. She she gets a big kick out of doing that, knowing the players' numbers before they do it at times. Uh, match days, you know, we get all the kits set out for the home games, all done on a Friday. So the, if the manager gives us a team on a Friday, we get it all set out there. Away games, we need to get it all packed. It's amazing what we have to pack. It takes a, probably a full van load to take it to the games. The the blue long sleeve shirts, I keep them on a blue hanger, I keep the the blue short sleeve on a grey hanger so that if there's any blood ever happens during a game can run in here quickly and the guys like Calvin Davidson only wears short sleeve, Liam Craig's only short sleeve, Murray Davidson's only long sleeve, can grab them quick, get them out of the dugout and get the guys changed over. Here we go, that's just where we put all the names on. All the players' names, all the new players' names. Uh, during the summer when we're doing the kit, we'll move this into the players' lounge because there's that much to do. We'll probably do, well, so far we've done, uh, use this machine 8,217 times in the last three years. Here is all our away strip. This is the uh, goalkeeping stuff, all the goalkeeping stuff here. Alan, McMahon, Alan Manis, all the way through, right through to Xander, to young Craig Reid if he's ever needed for the bench. These are what I call my blood shirt. The shirts and shorts that come out with no numbers. If the player ever gets blood on his shirt or his two shirts, we can also throw that on. Just tape, put a bit of tape in the back if required. These are all the footballs uh, for the youth team and <coughs> the first team. So we go through them quite regular. They either burst or get lost or go up the stand and then they get returned. Uh, this is what, as I say, the inner sanctuary. This is where everything that we need on a Saturday is kept. Tape that the players use in the socks, the new rules that we've got to have. White tape, we, if we're wearing, if we're on the white hoops. Yellow, which we're going to have a new yellow strip for f six games at the most. We're going to have to have a yellow strip to play against Kilmarnock away, Ross County away and Dundee away. And it's white, must be white, yellow must be yellow. And sky blue, we've got a way we, so far we're using a different colour of blue, but the referees are more worried about that than getting players kicked up and down the park. <laughs> the
the boot room here, and we call it the smelly room, it's stinking, it's absolutely boofing, it's hot. Everybody's got their boots, uh, the boys are training just now, so Alan Manis, as you can see here, we Chrissy Muller, we Midgey, we Midgey's got one, two, three, four pair of boots because he's going to do a bit of running today. He's, he's, he's mostly, he's sponsored by Joma. Uh, as you can see, the boots comes in all shapes, sizes and colours. That's Peter Collett. I'm going to be seen dead in them. All the young boys are more or less wearing Joma. If they're not wearing Joma, they buy their own boots. As you can see here, some of the young guys must be on the bench. Maybe they've got a bonus or something like that. So they're getting new boots. All the pads must stay on the players so that once we're packing them, we know exactly what stuff we're packing. And if we get it wrong, the young boys are in trouble. Uh, we've been lucky so far because uh, only once we've been wrong, Ricky McIntosh actually packed two leg boots for Dave Mackay. The reason being is he had his right and his left boot on the same side instead of opposite sides because when the kids take them off to pack them, we'll just grab them like that and take them away. Ricky had them on the wrong side, so obviously on the Monday he was sweating quite a bit, his tongue hanging out, I think we gave him 10 laps. Have you got any, um, any stories from over the years? Oh, you couldn't put them on camera. <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> you couldn't have Roddy Grant and Alan Moore that era, Gary Thompson, Tom Coyle, own Coyle. Some great, great stories. Owen only was the most superstitious manager I ever worked with. And I got a phone call one Saturday when they were up at Ross County. He sent me away to watch a player and, one of, and even though Owen wasn't playing, his uh, shin pads had been packed and they were his lucky shin pads since he was 16 year old and he said if uh, they lost the game at Ross County the kid that didn't pack his shin pads would be doing laps all day on the Monday because it was him to blame if they get beat for not packing his shinnies <laughs> It's great working with his managers, Alec Totten was great to work with you know he was the first one that really well we worked with in Gibson before that Gibby was good, the Tots come in, changed the whole you know he went from part time to full time Bert Payton who obviously was my mentor as a, a manager Always done, Bert was great that way. Going right through Coyley, Billy Stark, Dell, the, the new manager now, Steve Lomas. You know, they've all got their own wee traits that are really, you know, it's the thing that keeps them, you know, apart from each other. But I would never say anybody was any better than anybody else. But they've all been top class managers in their own right. I'm, I'm happy. I'd love to see the kids breaking through as I see them getting older and maybe time think maybe cutting back on doing certain things and letting the young boys come through. We've got, on the youth side, we've got some good coaches. Danny Griffin has joined us this year, and you know, and you see a lot of potential in Danny. I, I worked with Callum a couple of times with the youth. You see a lot of potential in Callum as well. So hopefully, I, you know, I can pass some tips on whether it be good or bad. They can make their mind up. But hope in some way I can help them and hope I can encourage them into the coaching career, because I think they've both got potential. Uh, football probably gave me enjoyment up till I came to St Johnson when I saw my pub wrestling, I was always part time, always in my job, I had a good job with Scottish Newcastle and I didn't want to leave it. But uh, when I came in full time, you know, it's, it was an ambition to sort of realised. But the, the most, thing it, most thing it does is give you enjoyment, it gives you a sense of purpose going to work because you knew it was going to be something different every day, whether it be the dressing room banter or whether it, you know, as I say to the kids, the one thing you're guaranteed in this game is disappointments and you've just got to bounce back, so it gives you that level-headed of being disappointment and that fun with the pressure and banter and it's a great life, great life.